गुरी विनंती च्या कॅन हिअर यू Oh I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize I was I was muted. <laughs> sorry. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Good. I'm happy to hear you. How was your day today? It has been good, I think. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Not too difficult of a day? Sorry? It wasn't too difficult your day? No. It, no? It, yeah, no. No, it has been as I told you, it has been a good day. Okay. A little bit heavy, but but it's good. Okay. Okay, good. Um wh where where is it that you work, Rafael? Sorry? Where do you work? Um if uh, I work in high school? In a high school? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. But um but the the kids are not going right now, huh? No. Uh, uh -huh. I've been yeah. working uh from home um uh, uh, through through the Zoom. Uh, but uh, we already finished the the classes. So, um almost on vacation <laughs> oh good 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 excellent uh so what what um what uh subject do you teach math ah okay yes all right and how are your students are they good students um some ones <laughs> are some of them. Students. <laughs> others, <laughs> others don't like a study they think that the life is going to give them everything they want and they don't want to study i think <laughs> yeah yeah i totally get it um yeah that happens that happens a lot um definitely but um well you know uh yeah you'll always get a little bit of all different types of students um yeah. you know students that are very dedicated other students that are just like yeah you know we'll just we're gonna see how it goes we'll wing it have you ever heard of that expression wing it wing it wing 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 it could you write it because the, mm -hmm. the audio of my computer is a little bit um, sure yeah not a problem I, I'll, i'll write it just for one second okay Hi, Luis. Hi, Carlos. Hi, teacher. How are you guys? I'm fine. Hi. Okay, good. Excellent. And you? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm having a good day, I would say. Yeah, it's, it's good enough. <laughs> yeah. What about the traffic jam? Oh, well, um, lucky for me i don't have to worry about traffic jam i work from from home all the time so i don't have to really we're so lucky <laughs> yeah i guess so i guess i am a little lucky that way <laughs> yeah um i definitely uh, I, i i right now actually to be honest that's actually one of the things that i most hate about um going out to work probably probably the worst part i hate about it um um it's just simply like being in that traffic jam and you know not not knowing you know what time you're going to be able to arrive to work um or coming back from work you know that um that kind of makes things a lot you know i, I really really don't like that part so it's a good thing that i'm that i, I don't have to worry about them yeah um rafael I wrote the um, the the expression or the the verb on the on the in in the chat. So it, it says to wing something, oh. and to wing something means um, what what it means is to um, do something spontaneously, yeah, like um, just uh, not with, without preparation. Okay, so to uh, to do something. Spon 
spontaneously, spontaneously without preparation. That's what it means, okay? There you go. To wing something, to do something spontaneously without preparation. So um, what I was telling you, Rafael, is that there are some students who are very dedicated, um, you know, and, and they will study and everything, and other students that will just wing it. Yeah, they just, they say, ah, you know, we'll see whatever happens in there. They don't prepare for it. How, do you find that? Yeah. Wing, teacher, the word, just the word wing is like, like bird is what the birds have, right? Wings. Yeah, exactly. Wings, exactly. So wing it means just kind of like, uh, be spontaneous, you know, like like birds. Bar birds fly in any direction. They don't really have a specific direction where they go to. Um, they yeah. just fly and they can go in any direction at all. And that's a wing it. Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Well, uh, welcome to those people that um, just came into the class. So uh, welcome. Uh, Maricela, and who else? Um, there's somebody, let me see who's, I can't quite figure out who's trying to, oh, Pamela. Pamela is connecting, but I guess her audio does, is not working so well right now. Um, and Alejandra, welcome as well. Okay. So guys, um, yesterday we started learning a little bit about um, the passive and active causative. So we learned about um, talking uh, when you want someone to do something for you. So you don't do it yourself. You ask another person to do it for you. And it could be one for one of two reasons, either as a favor or because you pay them to do it, right? Uh, just like, for example, I gave, it, I gave the example yesterday of cutting your hair. Now, how many of you cut your hair by yourself? And I asked that question yesterday and nobody said that they did it themselves. Because obviously when we, uh, we don't wanna, you know, we don't wanna be cutting our own hair because it's, it's very risky, okay? So what we do is we ask somebody else to do it for us. And we can either ask a family member or a friend um, to do it as a favor or, we, um, we ask a, a, a professional, you know, a hairstylist, you know, a hairdresser or a barber to cut our hair um, and we pay them, we pay them, we pay them to do it, right? So that is the causative form. Um, so before anything, before we start, I'm going to quickly go over the, um, the, a review, let's say, a review of what we saw last class. Okay, so we saw the causative form. And I explained that the causative form has uh, two parts, right? You can either have the, um, the active or the passive, right? And this is just a little bit of a review. So just to see if you guys remember a little bit of what we talked about last class. Um, so this is the active. So active, we'll make it not bold. So we have active. And we also have, of course, the passive, right? Okay. And um, we saw that the active has two forms, okay? 
um, the active can either be the subject. And I'm gonna do this really, really um, quickly so that we don't, we're a little bit more like um, spontaneous here so that we're not um, taking so long. We have the subject plus have, oh, hold on, just give me a second there. Subject plus have um, plus the someone, okay? So we have the someone here, someone plus the base form of verb of verb form of verb, okay? And that's one way that we can do it. The other way we saw that we could, that is possible for us to do it is the subject plus get. So you can use either have or get. Um, I'm sorry, I did the same mistake again. <laughs> I don't know why, I'm sorry. So it's not some bone, someone, I'm so sorry, I don't know. It's the, I'm thinking of the word somebody. Okay, so, okay. So we have um, subject plus get plus um, someone, not some bone. Okay, oh, there you I go again. Okay, so some, someone plus the, the um, two infinitive verb. Okay. Uh, verb. Verb. okay. <clears throat> so those are the two forms that we can use, right? So you got to be careful as to um, if, it, if you you got to be careful to to remember which um, which verb you're using. If have or get, they are both the same. The only difference is that with have you use the base form of the verb, with get we use the to infinitive verb, okay? All right, so that's, um, with the, and with the passive, what we do is we use the subject plus have or get, whichever one, it doesn't really matter. So it's up to you which one you wanna use, okay? And then we have um, the object, okay? So when I say the object, that's the thing that is going to receive the action, okay? So if I'm going to cut my hair, um, then my hair is the one that's gonna receive the action. Therefore, my hair is the act, the object. And then we use the past participle, the past participle. And um, although it's this is optional, we can use at or by, and then the, the somebody, right? Okay, the somebody. No, oh, sorry about that. All right, let's see. Somebody. Okay. Or let, let me just use the someone. I think it's easier if I do that. Okay, so um, add or buy plus a someone. And remember that is optional, you don't have to use it. And, um, and so I'm going to close this off. Okay, and that's our structure. So these are the structures that we saw yesterday. Do you have any questions, anything you wanna ask me about? I don't know, maybe if if you make some exercise. Uh, you mean like examples? Yeah. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, I can do that. Just give me a second. Okay, so um, 
Okay, just to give you an, an idea there. Um, hold on a second. Okay, so in the active, we can have, for example, um, a, so the subject in this case will be, um, I say I, I can say I have, okay, or yeah. Let's actually change it to she so that it's easier for you to see something. She has her mother. Okay, so so far I'm gonna stop there for a moment. So the subject is she, right? So I'm using have here. And then have, if you notice I'm using have in the single in the um, simple present. Okay, so she has, and then the someone is her mother. Now, because I used the word has, okay, that means that I'm using here, this one right here. And that means that after that, I'm gonna use the base form of the verb. So she has her mother um, in past participle. We could, so I could say she has her mother, uh, no, hold on. No, I'm sorry, right, not past participle, base form of the verb. She has her mother um, cut, her hair for her for her. Okay. She has her mother cut her hair for her. So we can we can identify here. In fact, um, I can actually make this a little bit longer. Um, give me a second. Give me a second here. Yeah, it's a little, there it goes. Okay. So I could actually make this a little bit longer and say um, some subject is not as long as space form of the verb. Um, and then we have the object, okay? And of course we can have a complement um, if we want, right? It's, 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 the complement is not necessary, but it is a possibility, okay? Complement. Complement. Okay, um, so that, that could be a possibility of making this a little bit longer. Um, or, yeah, well, well, yeah, we'll make it like this. And then I'll just extend the, this over here if it's possible. Let me see if I can extend, make it a little bit longer. Give me one second.
Okay, there we go. All right, so that um, that pretty much covers it. Um, so, um, like I said, the complement is is like an option, right? Okay. Um, so, uh, here we go. So we have if a mother cut her hair for her. So over here we have she, then we have have, and her mother is the someone. Cut is the base form of the verb, and her hair is the object and the complement for her. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now the same idea can be expressed. Um, the same idea can be expressed uh, using get. It's just that we're going to have to change the structure. Okay. But I'm gonna I'm going to write the same the exact same idea so you can see how the same idea is expressed in a different way. Okay, so we can say she gets her mother to cut her hair for her. There you go. Those are that would be the other possibility. Okay, so just give me a second. Let me change this right here. Okay, so we have two possibilities here. We have she, um, she is a subject, gets, it comes from the verb get, and then we have the someone is her mother, now here we have the two infinitive verb, right? To cut. The object is her hair, and then the complement for her. Okay, so there you go. So the same, the same idea is expressed in two different ways. Okay. Now I'm going to continue using the same idea, but I'm now I'm going to express it with the passive, and you'll see how that works. Okay. So we have. Um, I'm going to show you what that would be like. So in this case, we would continue saying the subject is she. She had, oops, so I'm going to change the color. Let's change it over here. All right, here's it. She, and then I'm going to say has or gets, okay, because I I'm, I can use each, any one of those. Like I decide if you want to use has or gets, it doesn't really matter. Just that gets it a little bit more informal, but not the very much of a difference. So she has, and then we would say the object. In this case, the object is, you guys tell me, what is the object? I'm not going to tell you. You tell me. Her hair. Her hair. Hey. Exactly. Okay, so she has her hair, right? Her hair is the object because we have the object over here, and her the object is over here, her hair. So she has her hair, and then it asks us to use the past participle. Okay, so we have, she has her hair, and then what's the past participle? Uh, the verb is cut, right? So what's the past participle of, of cut? Cut. Yeah, it actually so happens that cut has the same, the, the same passive, sorry, the same past participle, um, sorry, my mistake. This cut has the same structure in the past participle and is the base form. Okay, so so okay. she has her hair cut, and then we would use at or by. We can say in this case by because it's not a place; it's her mother, right? So by, and then we say the someone. The someone is her mother. So we say her. She has her hair cut by her mother. Okay, so we have here. M O R, okay, by her mother. She has her, so you can say she has her hair cut by her mother or she gets her hair cut by her mother. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes, you can. Yes. So you have seen how I'm able to express the exact same idea in three different ways, or better said, three different structures. Okay, so I can use the active with have or the active plus get or the passive with have or get. Okay, so those are the three ways of expressing this is the exact same 
idea. Okay? So far so good? Yes. 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 Okay, good. All right, guys, I'm going to stop sharing. And right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, some vocabulary that you might have already seen this. So I just want to make sure that you understand what they mean. So this is some vocabulary. This is what we call three word phrasal verbs. Tell me when you can see this. Yeah, we can see now. Okay, perfect. All right, so three word phrasal verbs. These are phrasal verbs that as the word, the, as the name expresses it, are composed of three parts, okay? So we have broken up with, came up with, looking forward to, cut down on, keep up with, put up with, get along with, take care of. Do we understand what broke up with means? Yeah. You separate. Yeah, separate, uh-huh, yeah. Um, so, it, but it basically, this one is used to describe like uh, when a couple is dating or simply they are a couple like in a marriage, right? So when a couple separates or they you can say break up with, okay? So for example, you can say, I broke up with my boyfriend. Okay, so it means that I separated with my boyfriend. Do we send come up with? Yes. What does it mean come up with? When you occur something. When you what? When you occur something. For example, I could say something like, I came up with an idea. Okay, yeah, exactly. So it basically means when you create something, okay. Um, so that's, that, that's what it means. Come up with, it means to create or have an idea, okay. Looking forward to, we understand the word looking forward to? Yes, thank you. Look, uh, but I've, uh, well, I don't, I don't know, but I remember that I see it, that I've seen it with just look. I look forward to going to the beach, for example. Okay, good. So what does that mean? Look forward to? Like to be anxious, maybe? Yeah, exactly. Uh, what it means to is to anticipate, to anticipate, okay? So when you, um, you're going, oh, you're looking towards the future, and you say, wow, I want this to happen. Okay, that's look forward to. For example, many of you are probably looking forward to the end of Dece December because there are vacations at the end of December. So you're looking forward to it. You're anticipating that, that moment, right? Uh, do we understand cut down on? I don't know if I'm pretty sure, but a cut down is like, I don't know if cut down on is like, cut down a tree, for example, or is not like that? Um, no, because remember, this is not just cut down, this is cut down on. So it's three word phrasal verbs. So what do you think that is? I don't know. <laughs> Any ideas, class? Anybody? No teacher. No? Okay. No. What it means cut down on is to reduce. To um, reduce. Like a, like a minimize teacher? Minimize, yes. Okay, yeah. For example, maybe your doctor tells you, you need to cut down on, uh, on sugar because you are diabetic, 
Oh, okay. okay. So it means that you have to minimize, reduce the amount of sugar. Now that doesn't mean you're not going to eat sugar. It means that you're just going to reduce it. So the quantity, instead of being like this, is going to be like this. That's oh. reduced. So to cut down on is to reduce. Okay. okay. Yeah. Keep up with. Do we yes. understand the word keep up with? Yes. What does it mean to keep up with? Uh, like, like, like go ahead or follow, follow something. Yeah. I think it's like follow the rhythm of something maybe. Yeah, that's more like it. Um, actually, yeah, follow, uh, so to keep up with means to be, continue at the same level as something. Okay, so keep up with, so for example, um, let's say that you are in a race, okay? You are in a race, a marathon, and you want to have the opportunity of winning. So if you want to have the opportunity of winning, you have to be, keep up with the people in the front. If you do not stay at the same level as the people in the front, you will not have an opportunity of winning. Okay? Do you understand okay. that? Keep up with? So continue, like when something advances, you continue at the same level of that advance. Wow. Yes, keep up with. Does that make sense? Yes, makes sense. Okay, just give me a moment. My, my throat is dry. Just give me one second. Okay, what about put up with? Do you know, you understand what it is put up with? Yeah. Yeah. The opposite of um, cut down on. It's like it's like when you can stand it, something. Um, because you can support something, I think. Um, you don't wanna continue with something. Uh, something like that, I think. <laughs> For example, if I say I can put up with her um her way, maybe her her and what? If, For example, if I, if I say something like I can't put up with her way anymore. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, put up with, okay, first of all, with phrasal verbs, um, there's almost always a verb that is synonym, let's say, is a synonym of that, of that, um, of, of that phrasal verb. So a synonym of um, put up with would be to tolerate. Okay. So tolerate. I can't put up with it. it. Means I can't tolerate it. Okay. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Or for example, I put up with her because she is your sister and you are my best friend. Okay. So I put up with her yeah. means I tolerate her because she is your sister and you are my best friend. And obviously. A, she is important to you, so I tolerate her. Or, for example, maybe it could be like your best, like it may your best friend's girlfriend. You know, maybe you don't like your best friend's girlfriend, but you tolerate her because you know it's your best friend, and obviously you want to be nice, right? So you put up with her, um, okay? Or you tolerate her. Now, get along with. What does that mean? Get along with. When you have a good relation with order. Exactly, yeah. 
get along with means to have a good relationship with someone. Okay, so the opposite, so, so this is kind of like the opposite of um, put up with. Put up with is like, okay, well, I have to tolerate it. Okay, like they say in Spanish, ni modo, you know. But in the case of get along with, get along with means, um, you know, you're going to try to, or better say, you, you, you make, you click and uh, you have a good relationship with someone. So maybe the opposite is true. Maybe your uh, best friend has a girlfriend and you are almost her best friend as well. Okay, so, um, so you know, you, you, you get along with, okay? And then finally we have take care of. Do you understand take care of? Yeah. Yes. What does that mean? Like look after, right? Right, look after another another verb. Um okay, so yeah, take care of, look after. Um uh so basically <laughs> For example, tent, teacher. For example, what? Tent. T E N D. Tent. T E N D. Tent to tent. Ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to tend to something. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. It, basically, take take care of has two different meanings. It can either be, for example, you can take care of a person, which means. Um, that you uh, look after them, you make sure they're okay, you care for their needs, et cetera, et cetera. Or it could also mean that you, um, you manage or administer something. So I take care of my house finances. I, yeah. So it means that I am the administer of all the money in my house, yeah? Yeah. Or for example, maybe I can say, I take care of my father's, um, of my father's uh, health, right? I, I go to the doctor with him because I am responsible for him. So it means that I administer all of his medical decisions. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it really depends yeah. on how you use it. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So, Any questions? Yeah. We're yeah. looking forward to. Um, um, how how um, must I use it? For example, because I I always say, for example, I look forward to going to the beach, but I see that you have put it in a form, so. The ing form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use it like with verb to be also or what? Could you write um, a double, please? Sorry, my, sorry. Could you repeat that again? Well, the thing is that I've already seen it. Mm -hmm. Just look forward to without ing form. So I don't know why are you. What, why have you put it with ing form? And um, in fact, I'm wondering if, if, if when I'm going to use uh, with ing form, I've got to put the verb to be before it or what? Oh, this, this is just a, a, like when you're, when you use, you say, for example, normally you use, I am looking forward to. I am looking forward to it. So normally we use it in the present progressive or the present continuous form, but no, you know, but this could all, like I could easily just eliminate that and um, write, for example, um, just give me a second. So if I wanted, I could say this um, simply look forward to. So it's really not a big deal. That means it's the same. Yeah. If I use it in present perfect in present continuous, sorry, and and the same with 
uh, super present. Yeah. So look forward, like this part, part of look, it could be in any form. I can say, um, I'm looking, um, looked in the past, um, looks in the simple present or with the third person singular, have looked, you know, the present per perfect, any form. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, what I want you to do is the following. I would like you to work with a partner and I sent a picture um, to the WhatsApp group. I don't know if you guys have the opportunity of, of seeing it. If you haven't, um, then you can take a look at it right now. But anyways, I'm gonna write it. I'm going to put it on the board in this moment so you can see it. So just give me a moment. So this is the pictures that I sent you. These are places in the city, okay? So there are different places in the city. We have the airport, the amusement park, the bakery, the bank, the barber shop, the, the bookshop, the bus stop, the butcher, the church, the cinema, the fire station, the flower shop, the gas station, the groceries, um, the hairdresser, the hospital, the hotel, the library, the museum, and the park. Do we understand this vocabulary? Are there any words of things that you don't understand? How do you call the person who, sh who, who chop the, the meat, who works, in fact, in the butcher shop? The person who cuts the meat and works yeah. on yeah, they are the butcher. Uh, the same? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, okay. they are the butcher. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing here, like the hairdresser. I'm, I'm at the hairdressers, right? And the person that, uh, that works there is the hairdresser, right? So it's the same thing. Okay. So we understand this vocabulary? Yes, okay. All right, so what I'm gonna ask you to do is the following. You're gonna be working with a partner and I'd like you to be able to um, use the passive and the active causative to talk about services that you can have done around the city. To give you an example, okay, um, at the airport, what service could you get the airport? You can say, for example, you can um, you can say, I, you can have your passport stamped at the pass at the airport. Yeah, you can have your passport stamped at the airport. That could be an idea, right? Or um, what, could, what can be done at the butchers? Okay, you can say, um, you can, or better said, you, um, you ha I have my, my, um, let me think, I have my, Um, oh, okay, um, I have my, oh, what do you, no, hold on, just give me a second, um, okay, you, uh, you can say here, for, for example, hospital, you can have your stitches removed at the hospital. You can have your stitches removed at the hospital. Or you can say, the doctor, um, no, sorry, you can get the doctor to remove your stitches at the hospital. You understand stitches? 
stitches puntos, los puntos, no. oh, like when, okay. you, when you cut yourself. Okay, so you can say, you can say, you can get the doctor to remove the stitches at the hospital, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, does that make sense for everybody? Do you understand what you're going to be doing? Yes, Chuck. Yes. Okay. And I would like you to also use the vocabulary that I just showed you. If you want, I will send the, the picture um, in the WhatsApp group. I'll send it in a moment. And um, you can use the vocabulary from the you know the the, the uh, phrasal verbs. You can use that vocabulary in your conversations. Okay. So right now I'm going to stop sharing. You guys already have those, um, those that, that picture, so shouldn't be a problem. And I'm going to sign right now. Uh, people, okay. I'm gonna give you. Let's see. I'll give you about ten minutes, I think, to talk about it. Okay. So I'm going to open the rooms. And I will send you everybody the um, the phrasal verbs in the in the WhatsApp group. Um, um, like, um, bank or the supermarket. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that we have to use a um, affirmative sentence. Okay. Uh -huh. um, for example, you you have um, let me see. Mm -hmm. Teacher, you make me nervous. <laughs> I haven't even said anything. <laughs> <laughs> but you be there. So no, I can me. think. Ignore I can think me. anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You just ignore me. Okay? I, I'm not here. Okay. okay? okay. I'm, I'm invisible. Okay? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. That, that's why I turn off. That's exactly why I turn off my camera and everything. Because uh, I don't want you guys to think that I'm. Just, just ignore me. Okay. Okay, but uh. Oh, by the way, I already sent the picture to the WhatsApp group. Sorry. I I just sent ah, the okay. picture to the WhatsApp group. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Okay. Thank you. Um. Uh, 
I don't know. You you get a a book to to I don't know to the bookshop. I don't know. Hi guys. Hi teacher. Hello teacher. Hi. What happened? <laughs> we're writing. Uh, we're <laughs> writing <laughs> the sentence. Are you communicating uh, telepathically or what? <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. the thing is, it's a little bit complicated, but. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to write it in a moment. Uh -huh. No, 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 don't write, don't write. I, I just want you to speak. Okay. Ah, okay. This is ah, okay. for speaking. Yes. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, Rafael. Yes. About about the bus station. Um, I have I have a sentence. Okay. In active in active voice. Um. Do you know where I can have any bus station near near here? Sorry, what did you say? Do you know where I can have any bus station near near of here? Well, you can get uh, to the bus station over here. Um, just crossing, just to just just crossing, just crossing. Uh, across, sorry, just crossing the the street. Um, um, okay. Teacher, sorry. Um, it is good that just crossing the street or just across the street. Uh, just across the street. Just across the street. Across the street. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Just be careful that. Okay. What you guys were saying was not grammatically incorrect, but it's not using the structure that we're we're talking yeah, about. Okay. So maybe you can say, for example, um, you can say you can have the bus driver pick you up at the bus station. Mm -hmm. Right? You can have the bus driver pick you up at the bus station. Oh, okay. Right? Okay, so that's kind of the the idea, right? So try to, to use um, the form that we have been practicing. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So, Luis, yeah. um, tell me, tell me, Rosa. Um, you know what? Uh, I had the butter prepare my meat. I don't know if you could, if you could go to pick it up for me. Um. Sounds good, Rafael. Just be careful. We pronounce it butcher. Ah, uh, okay, butcher. But sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's, that's good. That's good. 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 But uh, could you spell it, please? But butchers. It's right there in the in the picture. Um, it's number. I don't know. Let me see what number it is. Did you send it in a chat word picture? Oh yes. No, no. It's in the in, in the picture in picture. that I sent to the to the to the WhatsApp. Let me see. It's in number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Ah, oh, yeah. but it's... Okay. But so, yeah. Right there. Okay, I'm going to repeat it um, so, so that I can um, fix it. Um, well, Luis, I had the butcher, the butcher, sorry, prepare my meat. So I was wondering if you could go to pick it up for me, maybe. Um. Yes, Rafael. I can get. I can get the butcher. For maybe. I, I had to put up with my friend. The. Oh, for example, with I I have to put up with my 
or I, I put up with my girlfriend, girlfriend, friends, something like that could be. For, for example, if I, I put up with my teacher, for example. Mm -hmm. Could be. Oh my goodness. It's, 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 only, it's only an example. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. What's a, it's not true. a bad moment. It's not, not, not this it's not another yeah. teacher, right? <laughs> only for only for example. Only example. Okay. Yeah, it was a really bad moment for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awkward moment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, bad example for those mm -hmm. for this day, but <laughs> what others? Teacher, is that correct if I said I had to put up with my friend and background noise in the museum? So for Could you that? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Hey, I had Okay, I had to put up with my friend to the background noise in the museum. I have to put up. Yeah, that's with my good. Friend. I had to put up with my friend. Uh, the background noise in the museum. To put up with my friend. Okay, now in that case, you when you say put up with my friend, it means that uh, you are the one who is tolerating your friend. So if you oh, okay. say that Joy y mi amiga or um, toler okay. tolerarlo, then you would have to start with the subject, oh. my friend and I had to put oh, up okay. with the, the noise, right? And then you say that. Oh, okay. Okay. It's okay. something like lidiar con, for example, maybe. Lidiar con, mm, kind of, kind of. Um, let me see yeah, that just to make sense by for me. Yeah, but, yeah, but I know yeah, that yeah. that that's not the, the exactly verb, right? Okay. Uh huh. No, but that that's kind of the idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can use that. Okay, I have to prom. Or you can also say like aguantar. Tolera. Yeah. Kind of the idea. No, okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so. Okay, and also. Um, to. Agradar, ¿cómo se llama? To. To please, no. You can, teacher, how do you say agradar? Please. Please. Mm -hmm. You can get your flowers to please your mom. Yeah. Uh, to flower, Ay, I lost it. To flower shop. Your mom at, at the flower shop. Mm -hmm. At the flower shop, right? Yeah, that's fine. And you can say you can get the vegetable to cook your dinner by yourself. Uh, that's my no. No, in that case no, because this remember this is something uh, the you can get, and then you have the somebody and vegetables. Ah, uh, yes, it's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. Okay, the somebody or someone. Okay. Yeah. And you can. <laughs> can you say you can get someone to cook your dinner, but <laughs> sure. your dinner just add. I would say, for example, if you could say add. like, um, you can get someone to prepare your dinner okay. at a restaurant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I 
I told Ayana that I understand all the things in the class teacher. All, all the examples. But when you have okay. to, when you have to do one sentence, it's too hard to me. <laughs> but I understand. No. I understand. <laughs> okay, good. But but thank you for someone. Someone is true. Is the structure? Yes. Mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 You have to follow the structure. Yes. If you don't follow the structure, it's not going to be correct. Okay. Okay. Follow the structure. Um, and you can get the nurse to cure your bones at the hospital? My, Diana, are you there? Yes. Uh, so in <laughs> You're so quiet. I was like, oh, is she actually there or not? <laughs> no, in this moment, I, um, I want to ask the same sentence so, okay 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 it's good. okay if uh, if we say you can get a nurse to cure your wounds at the hospital yeah yeah um yeah or to better so not to cure uh it would be more to like maybe clean okay. clean to clean oh, your yeah. wounds okay Mm -hmm. and, or dress your wounds, to dress, like vendar, to dress your wounds. Or treat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. To please is new for me. To please? To please. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Con placer. Mm -hmm. To. Always with the to. No, well, no, no, no. It's like, I mean, the, that's the verb, to please, right? And, right. Uh, and you're going to change it depending on what form you, you need to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 All right. I'm going to actually be closing the sessions. Um, so I'll see you guys in the main session in a moment. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> another one. And Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, okay, so you had an opportunity there to talk to your partner, to talk about, to use the structure. And remember, it's so important for you to follow the structure, right? So if um, after have you, or have to get, you use the somebody, then you gotta make sure that you use it. Or after have or get, you need to use an object, make sure you put the object. So follow that structure and you can't go wrong. Okay, do you have any questions about the structure or about the vocabulary that we've seen today? Yes, I have one teacher. Okay, what is it? Well, about? yes, um, we were talking about that my friend uh, had left his car on the, by the, 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 the gas station. Okay. And he was, um, asking me to go to pick it up. So, and I, I was wondering if it's correct to say something like, I, I asked him, what happens if the person who is in charge of looking after the cars asks me for a permission? Is it correct? What happens if the person that is in charge of, of what? Looking after the cars? 
ha asked me for a permission. For permission for what? Uh, for me to take the car. Okay, ask me for permission to take the car. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Can I or, yeah. or, or can I put um, looking after the car? Um, get me to get me a permission. Get me for a permission using get instead of has this time. Example? For the same example, for example, if I say something like, what happens if the person who is in charge of looking after the cars gets me for a permission? Uh, no. Okay. No, that wouldn't make sense. Okay. Mm. No, sorry about that. No, no, that would not make sense. Okay, okay, thank mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so just make sure you use the structure, follow the structures. Yeah, yeah I think mm -hmm. I need to practice more with, with this structure. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, what I can do, I will see if I can get some exercises for you guys to practice and I'll send them to the WhatsApp group. Does that okay. sound good? Yes, please. of course. Okay. Please, please. All right, that's fine, guys. Okay, we're going to finish our class here today, guys. It's been a pleasure seeing you guys again. Um, take care, and um, hopefully we'll see each other tomorrow. Okay? It'll be the middle of the week, almost finished. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay? All right, guys, okay, take yeah. care. Have a wonderful uh, evening too. and a great sleep. Thank, Thank you, teacher. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have a good night. Bye. Bye-bye.